believes a former professional wrestler has been arrested after a woman told investigators he sexually assaulted and beat her. That wrestler who goes by the name Alberto Del Rio and whose real name is Jose Rodriguez Chuquan is facing a sexual assault charge. The night team's Jaffney Gray joins us now with more on these allegations. Jaffney. Guys, the details in this case so graphic, it's too graphic to speak about on air. Now, the sexual assault allegedly happened last Sunday. The victim told investigators it all started after Chuquan became angry with her, accusing her of being unfaithful. An affidavit states Chuquan allegedly hit the victim several times in the head before making her put on a dress and dance for him. Investigators say Taquan told the victim not to cry and if she did, he threatened to take her son and quote, drop him off in the middle of the road somewhere. Taquan is then accused of tying the victim's hands with his boxing straps and gagging her with a sock during the sexual assault. The victim says she didn't remember much after Taquan placed his hand around her throat. Days later, when the victim provided a statement and photos of visible bruises for police, Taquan was was arrested for sexual assault. Now, just a little history about Taquan, who resides here in San Antonio. He became the first Mexico-born world champion in the WWE history after securing the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship twice, according to Sports Illustrated. He is also the only wrestler to win both the 2011 Royal Rumble and the 2011 Money in the Bank ladder match in the same calendar year. Taquan's bond was set at $50,000, but he has since bailed out. Guys? Hopefully this will be a short-lived, um, strange Mother's Day that we all remember and that we can go back to hugging our moms and, and cooking out in their backyards uh, in short order. Uh, but, you know, moms uh, raise us uh, to expect the unexpected and to deal with the cards that were dealt. Mayor Ron Nuremberg weighing in on Mother's Day during the coronavirus pandemic briefing today. He, along with several families in our community, taking time to thank the special individuals in their lives who helped make them the people they are today. We'll have more on how the community celebrated that holiday in just a bit. But first, we are taking a look at the latest numbers here in Bear County. The mayor revealing 1,901 confirmed cases of COVID-19. None of those cases coming from the jail and no new deaths have been reported. That number still stands at 56. 61 people, meanwhile, tonight remain hospitalized and 976 people have now recovered. We have learned tonight Vice President Mike Pence will not be self-quarantining despite his press secretary testing positive. Instead, a spokesperson tells us Pence plans to be at the White House tomorrow. The vice president's office also says Pence has tested negative and is following doctor's guidance. It was Friday when President Trump confirmed Pence's press secretary, Katie Miller, had been infected. Her husband also works in the West Wing. Meanwhile, the heads of the Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are in self-quarantine. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says he's in a modified quarantine. They were all exposed to an unnamed person at the White House who was tested positive. We'll have more on the national response to COVID-19 coming up in just a bit. Dream shattered. That's what vendors at Traders Village had to say after they were forced to close their doors the night before they were originally set to reopen last week. The city of San Antonio said the flea market could not reopen, but after the state changed course and gave the green light, thousands showed up this weekend. The night team Stephen Cavazos now with how the small business owners are getting back into the swing of things. Traders Village really brings in a lot of people. And on any ordinary weekend, we're told that could mean up to 15,000. But this weekend, it's far less. Traders Village reopened for the first time in almost two months. For a number of years now, this has been our only income. These two months, it was really tough. Alfredo Castellanos is the owner of Tejano Imports. He says they've been at Traders Village since day one. But as COVID-19 continued to spread, business came to a halt. Two weeks in, it was more fear of not getting any income than the actual virus. But those fears slowly fading as customers returned. Traders Village tells us it wants to maintain a 20% capacity and only a portion of vendors have returned. Food stands are open, but rides remain closed. And right when they enter, customers are encouraged to put their masks on and stay safe. Although business is slowly returning, it almost didn't happen. Vendors had hoped to return last weekend, but those efforts were shut down by city officials. For Winnie Holcomb, owner of Indios Boots, it was heartbreaking. I had to cry and I went to go buy wine that night. Our dream was shattered. For the Texas Division of Emergency Management, told KSAT last week that flea markets can reopen as they're classified as shopping malls. Holcomb says that she's happy to get back to work this weekend, but it will take time before things are booming once again. 
kind of slow, so we're struggling to get back to our normal rhythm. She says it's not just a business, it's a livelihood. We live for this. This is our daily, this is our struggle, this is our hustle. Now, we did reach out, we did speak with Rudy Escamillo, who is the general manager here at Traders Village. He did say that he does hope to see more vendors return as restrictions are loosened in the future. But for now, he is happy that business is getting back to some new sense of normal. Reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Tim Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. Also worth noting, the city has shut down both the Rustic and the Lion and Rose British Restaurant and Pub at the Rim for violating the city's emergency declaration. The mayor told us tonight bars are still not allowed to be open, and if restaurants are earning more than 51 percent of their sales from alcohol, they will be considered a bar and will be closed. Aside from a few citations, the mayor says the rest of San Antonio's businesses seem to be cooperating. Governor Greg Abbott's newest executive order has reopened more of Texas, including businesses like hair salons and malls. Also on the list, outdoor activities like kayaking. Alicia Barrera caught up with Mission Adventure Tours to learn about their new safety standards to keep the public protected. Out of necessity came innovation for Sarah Neal, owner of Mission Kayak. The governor's allowing outdoor activities. So I sat down and really thought about it and talked with some of my employees and we're like, you know what, if we can do it at a spot of park, we can do the same thing up here at Gunther. Mission Adventure Tours is once again offering kayak rentals from their main location at Espada Park and their new mobile location at 100 East Gunther Street. The way we operate and what we've come up with is we're doing more rentals like what you see here at King Williams um, and we space those every 15 minutes apart and that way we can keep social distancing. Masks aren't required once you step into the kayak since it's considered an outdoor sport. Enjoy, happy Mother's Day. Even so, New restrictions are in place, such as a limit on how big your group can be. We're limiting it to four people, and that's per the governor's recommendations. If you're a larger family and you've got, you know, five, six, seven family members that live in the same household, we can get you on the water at the same time. And Mission Kayak wants to assure its customers that they're doing everything they can to make sure that you're safe. So once you're done kayaking, you'll take off all your equipment, set it down so the staff can begin sanitizing it with a solution. We uh, use a bleach solution. We spray down the kayaks. We spray down the outside, the inside of the life jackets. We spray down the paddles and they sit with that spray on them for 15 minutes before they even go back out. We usually put seven or 800 on a weekend. And although according to Neil, reservations have cut back by one eighth. We're averaging um, between 100 and 150 customers a weekend. She says it's enough to bring staff back to work and even hire new team members. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam after an absolutely beautiful Mother's Day today. I hope you were able to enjoy the nice weather, the sunshine and the low humidity because the low humidity that's not going to be around for too much longer. High temperatures across South Texas today, generally in the low to mid 80s. 83 was our high here in San Antonio, but out in Del Rio, 89 your high temperature getting close to 90 degrees there. But again, with the low humidity, it felt nice for everyone this afternoon. It will be getting muggy. Tomorrow is the day that our wind direction changes and that surface moisture starts to build back in. There is a question of some storms late tomorrow night into Tuesday, and that's likely why the flyover has been pushed to Wednesday. So I'll have your flyover forecast along with your full planning forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Well, instead of cookouts and big celebrations, many families spent Mother's Day at a distance. Though the COVID-19 pandemic put a halt to Mother's Day traditions, it did not stop families from expressing their love for their moms. The night team's Jaffney Gray took a stroll down Woodlawn Lake Park today and talked to people celebrating this special day. Maybe we couldn't go to church today, but at least we can be out here with what God created. Mother's Day was a bit different for families this year. Sally Durham says last year. We got to go to a restaurant. But today, a walk was perfect for her and her energetic kids. Burn some energy, get them tired and outside the house. For 73-year-old Rick Sanchez. We just decided that uh, let's go to the park and have a picnic. Mother's Day has a deeper meaning for him and his grandchildren. Since my grandpa like took us in, like it's been like way better. Something was missing and it was him the whole time. So he just came, fits the world perfectly, does everything he can and just grateful. So for today, celebrate with him, 
just like a mother. Indeed, the coronavirus pandemic has impacted families on this holiday. But for Matt Baron, it hit close to home. His mother is in the hospital with COVID-19. So it's the first kind of Mother's Day. We don't actually get to like surprise her with flowers, take her to her favorite spot for breakfast. It's a little different, um, but she's still here. She's still fighting. Maria Aliman can relate as her 70-year-old mother is battling stage four breast cancer in the hospital. She too hasn't physically seen her mother in weeks. We dropped off the flowers and balloons and she was very, very happy. We surprised her. Whether families got a chance to celebrate with their mothers in person or not, they all agree that mothers in general are special. She's a very strong person. Um, she's already fought three cancers. The backbone of the, of the family, mm -hmm. they, they hold the family together. She's everything, right? She's our role model, she's our protector, um, she's our biggest fan. And to their loved ones. I love her and that I miss her and that I wish she was home with us. Just keep fighting and you got a lot of people that want you to come home. Keep on trucking. <laughs> no one is anything in this world without their mama. So live it up. Treat yourself today. Take care of yourself today. Love yourself today. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Still to come on the night beat, the family of a man who was shot and killed while running in Georgia reacts to surveillance video shedding new light on that investigation. Plus, it can be difficult to judge whether something you hear or read online is real or just flat out false. Earlier this week, our Trust Index team looked into whether there's actually a shortage of personal protective equipment in Bear County. A look at the results at 1030. And next, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to damage the nation's economy. We'll show you how more states are working to reopen safely without furthering the spread of the virus. Well, as millions of Americans deal with the devastating economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic, states, including Texas, have begun easing restrictions, allowing some businesses to reopen. Yeah, but the number of new cases in some states continues to rise. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert with the details. The coronavirus continues to take a devastating toll on the economy. More than 20 million jobs lost last month. Unemployment now at 14.7%, the highest since the Great Depression. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow says there's a glimmer of hope, saying the bulk of job losses are temporary, but adding... It's going to take a while uh, for the reopening to have an impact. So there's that. States now grappling with how to reopen safely. It's a risk if we don't do anything. It's a risk if we if we do this. Um, what we have done is come up with the best practices uh, for businesses to reopen. Stay at home restrictions eased in 45 states. In 15 of those states, the number of new cases is still on the rise, including Texas, which saw a one day increase of more than a thousand new cases. But New York State still under stay at home orders. The governor saying some regions may see an easing of restrictions sooner than others. It's all data based and we'll look at those numbers. We'll look at those data points to see where it's safe to open. In New York City, where there has been some racial disparity in the enforcement of social distancing guidelines, the mayor says the city will be taking a new approach. We're going to increase intensely the number of public servants who are out there educating, providing face coverings, reminding people of the rules, helping people to get it right. As businesses do begin to reopen across the country, many will enact new social distancing measures, including airlines. Ethan Weiss flying home after volunteering to fight the pandemic in New York, writing, I guess United is relaxing their social distancing policy these days. United not commenting on why social distancing was not implemented, but saying we've overhauled our cleaning and safety procedures and implemented a new boarding and deplaning process to promote social distancing. Government officials also grappling with coronavirus. Senator Lamar Alexander's chief of staff just tested positive for COVID-19. The Tennessee senator was set to chair a committee on the coronavirus here in D.C. next week, but will now video conference in. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Really perfect weather out there this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're wearing we're wearing pink and purple for Mother's Day. So yeah. happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We so appreciate what you've done. Yeah, thank you. And happy Mother's Day to all those folks out there. Yeah. Great weather to enjoy all yeah. the activities today. I hope all the moms got to sit outside for a little bit, enjoy the low humidity, maybe had a couple of drinks yeah. brought not to teach school through the course of the day. <laughs> yes, you had the day off from school. That's for sure. Nice and warm out there this afternoon, but the low humidity really helped it from feeling too bad out there at all. As we 
get into the week ahead. It is going to stay warm. The orangish numbers I have for you there, the bigger numbers, those are your air temperatures. That's where our high temperatures will be this week. The number below it in green, that's the dew point. And if you've lived in South Texas long enough, you know that when our dew points start to get into the 60s, that's when things start to feel pretty muggy again. So for the back half of the week, as we see our air temperatures approach 90 degrees, we are not going to catch a break with the humidity. Once that mugginess really settles in by, I think you'll start to feel it really Tuesday. It'll be with us for the rest of the week, and it looks like through next weekend as well. So I hope you were able to enjoy the dry air this weekend because it will be leaving us very soon. 71 now at the airport under mostly clear skies. We've got a nice spread now between our air temperature and our dew point, so the air is still nice and dry. Light winds out of the east at 5, uh, five to 10 miles per hour. And look at our dew points right now. They're in the 40s for a lot of us, starting to climb into the 60s down closer to the coast, but a lot of us are enjoying some lower dew point numbers this evening. And as we head into the overnight hours, we'll see a gradual uptick in the dew points, but it really won't be until this time tomorrow that those numbers will really start to climb for all of us. And that will be because through the day tomorrow, our wind direction will shift from the east to the south southeast, and that's going to pull in all that surface moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. But thankfully, not only tomorrow, but it looks like every day this week, as things are warm and muggy in the afternoons, we'll have a nice breeze around 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that should help us out just a bit. More clouds around tomorrow compared to what we saw today. Bright sunshine today. Tomorrow, some more clouds around. Uh, we'll see high temperatures climb back into the low to mid 80s. A stray shower, not out of the question in the afternoon, but I actually think it is late tomorrow night into the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning that we actually have a better shot to see some rain here in San Antonio. So let's talk about why. We've got some rain out near the Big Bend region of Texas there, and even some severe storms approaching the Texas Panhandle. The weather pattern is quickly becoming quite unsafe settled off on the uh, western half of the United States there. And I actually want to take you to this area I've circled here, this little dip in these lines. These are the winds in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. And when you see the pattern of the winds kind of become disturbed and dip down like that, that's a sign that there's a piece of upper level energy there. We call these disturbances short waves. Well, this short wave is going to be approaching Texas late tomorrow and Tuesday, and that's what could fire off some storms for us. So I do want to walk you through future casts tomorrow. Again, more clouds around tomorrow compared to what we saw today, and I can't rule out some stray showers tomorrow in the afternoon, especially south of San Antonio and Highway 90. It is late tomorrow night, though. It could be this time tomorrow night that a complex of storms will be moving out of far west Texas as that short wave disturbance moves into the western portion of the state. So we'll have to watch these storms. They could have enough gusto behind them that they make it all the way to the I-35 corridor in San Antonio overnight Monday through the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning. The trend should be that they will gradually weekend, but we could definitely have some heavy rain, some flashes of lightning hold together late Monday night into the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday and even maybe some lingering showers late Tuesday morning. So that is likely why the Air Force Thunderbirds moved that flyover from Tuesday to Wednesday this week. And here's the forecast for the flyover on Wednesday. It begins at 1:20 p.m. We will start off cloudy Wednesday morning, but I expect will be partly cloudy by the by the time the flyover begins. 83 temperatures will be climbing into the mid 80s there and it'll be humid. But uh, again, we'll have a nice breeze with us on Wednesday if you want to step out and catch the flyover. I uh, will climb into the low 90s, upper 80s, low 90s back half of next week. It does look like start of next weekend. We'll have a stronger storm system approaching Texas and that could bring us a better shot at some showers and storms and we'll talk more about those rain chances and take a look at the latest drought monitor coming up because we do need some rain guys. Thank you very much, Katie. I want to take an opportunity right now to apologize to you all. Earlier in the show, we uh, aired a story, and one of the people that we interviewed had an expletive on his shirt. We did not catch it. It aired. We apologize for that. We are currently looking into what happened, and we will fix it. And again, we apologize. We'll be back with more right after this. Turning to sports now, Spurs star Patty Mills using this Mother's Day to raise funds and awareness to help combat domestic violence. With more on what's on tonight's instant replay, let's check in with our Greg Simmons. You know, he's been such a leader now off the court during this pandemic, uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It's just been incredible. And now he adds to that. And both the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans schedules are out and both open up 2020 with two big games coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Bill O'Brien and the Texans get to kick off the 2020 NFL season on September the 10th. If all goes as 
plan when they are rematched against the defending Super Bowl champs, the same Kansas City Chiefs, who came from behind down 24 to nothing and eliminate the Texans in the playoffs 51-31 before advancing to win Super Bowl 54. The Dallas Cowboys get to help the L.A. Rams open their brand-new stadium in Inglewood that weekend on Sunday Night Football. We're making an, an impact here on, on an issue that involved mothers um, and their children. So it kind of was um, a, a stars aligning and, and, you know, kind of one of those types of deals. Spurs star Patty Mills using this Mother's Day to raise money and awareness to combat domestic violence. They raised funds through eight coffee shops today in San Antonio in his campaign called Give Mama Coffee. He's going to double the money raised so it helps also local businesses during the COVID-19 pandemic. He played D line in college. I didn't think he had any hands. <laughs> and then, man, he was sticking them. Wyatt was telling me that uh, for D lineman, um, he didn't think you haven't had any hands, but you're actually not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have to, to, to go on the record. I do have the best hands in the family, uh -huh. and, and that, which is up for you know, if you ask if you ask one of those guys, they'll tell you something different. And I, Larry Ramirez, visit with Steel quarterback Wyatt Beagle and his family and how the Arkansas State Commit is keeping fit with schools shut down for the remainder of the semester. And what has the Riverwalk looked like since businesses have had to shut down? We'll give you a look as it's been like in downtown San Antonio for the last two months. It includes music and pizza on the river. All that plus our championship cinema reviews of Fighter starring Mark Wahlberg as Mickey Ward, who faced our own Jesse James Leia. And do you believe the NFL season will kick off on time? Tonight you decide. Instant replay is live and is after the night beat. That's the $64,000 yeah. question right now. Lots to talk about. Thanks, Greg. We'll yeah. see you a bit later. The night beat continues right after this. New surveillance video now part of the investigation into the shooting death of 25 year old Ahmed Arbery. Now, Arbery was allegedly shot by a father and son while running down a road back on February 23rd. ABC Zachary Keish brings us the latest details in this case. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations is reviewing new video in relation to the shooting death of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery. Law enforcement reviewing this video appearing to show Ahmad Arbery in the moments before he died. This surveillance footage was obtained by ABC affiliate First Coast News. Attorneys representing Arbery's family says it was Ahmad in the video, but added he wasn't breaking the law. This is consistent with the evidence already known to us. Ahmad Arbery was out for a jog. He stopped by a property under construction where he engaged in no illegal activity and only remained for a brief period. Ahmad did not take anything from the construction site. Gregory and Travis McMichael, a former cop and his son, who are both white, are now charged with felony murder in the case. According to police reports, on February 11th, about two weeks before the shooting, Travis called police to report a black man in a house nearby under construction. He chased him. Then on February 23rd, the McMichaels told officers they armed themselves and followed Arbery, who was jogging, because they said he looked like the man seen in these surveillance images given to ABC News by a local lawyer. Arbery's family maintained it's not him in those images. Whatever they're trying to make out, they're just trying to justify for what they did, they can't do it. If he were married a crime, why didn't you call and start him? What you came out here with? Go on, got you hunting an animal down. Video of the February 23rd incident has been seen by millions, leading to protests and calls for justice. Two prosecutors recused themselves from the case due to their prior working relationship with Gregory McMichael. Agents with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations arrested the father and son this past Thursday, 74 days after the killing, but just two days after taking over the case. And now Georgia's attorney general saying his office will be looking into how the Ahmad Arbery case was handled from the outset, adding the family, the community, and the state of Georgia deserve answers. So far, Gregory and Travis McMichael have not hired legal representation. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Taking a look now at how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting those outside our borders. Today, the city at the epicenter of the crisis reported its first new case since April 3rd. The patient is in critical condition at a hospital in Wuhan, China. The man's wife also tested positive for coronavirus and was reported as an asymptomatic case. The Wuhan Health Commission says the cause of the patient's infection is past community infection. And after testing other people in the same community, five more asymptomatic patients were found. This after China reopened Wuhan's borders on April 8th following a 76-day lockdown.
Moving to Europe now, where the UK is easing some stay-at-home restrictions. In an address today, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said people who can't telecommute are encouraged to return to work tomorrow. That's for employees in fields like construction and manufacturing. He also says people will be able to enjoy unlimited outdoor exercise as of Wednesday, but should only do so with members of the same household. Johnson also warned if problems or another outbreak occurs, the restrictions will return. Meanwhile, in Spain, Madrid's government will give out 14 million K9 or KN95 face masks to its residents starting tomorrow. The first batch of face masks arrived Sunday from Shanghai. The city government paid $34.6 million for them. They will be handed out to all residents in the region at no charge. Madrid's government wants to ensure citizens know that the KN95 masks are reusable for up to 48 consecutive hours. Back here at home, we've heard over the past weeks that the mayor and county judge say there is a good supply of personal protective equipment at our larger local hospitals and that there's no shortage. Even so, we've had some questions from you, our viewers, about whether that's true. So we ran it through our KSAT Trust Index to make sure that's the case. It's been part of the panic that's accompanied the pandemic across the globe, personal protective equipment, or PPE. Many places like New York City drowning in COVID-19 cases have constantly had a shortage of PPE in hospitals. In San Antonio, however, we've been told that's not the case, but we wanted to check for ourselves. A spokeswoman for Methodist Health System confirmed their PPE supply is strong. That's in great part due to their inventive disinfectant system. Methodist Healthcare piloted the use of UV light to disinfect N95 masks and develop the process to safely transport, disinfect, and return the masks to healthcare workers. The system, called ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, or UVGI, is now being used across the country. It allows masks to be sterilized six times before being thrown away, but to be safe, Methodist is tossing them after five uses. They're currently disinfecting about 200 masks a day for all Methodist facilities. Now to University Health System, which sends out weekly updates, including information about the PPE supply. Today, a spokeswoman confirmed the supply has recently improved, saying, now that the supply chains are reopening, we are stocking up. We had previously been on a just-in-time inventory management system. Baptist Health System, including St. Luke's Hospital, also has no shortages. A statement from leadership today saying, we can safely care for our patients with the supplies we currently have. Christus Santa Rosa hospitals and clinics have a strong supply, saying today, not to say it hasn't been a challenge to think creatively, but we are in a really good position right now. They have also created a mask repurposing system for Santa Rosa and the Children's Hospital. UT Health San Antonio has clinics and labs across the city with its healthcare workers and researchers on the front line. They say they do not have a shortage and are closely monitoring our PPE and providing universal masking to our employees. With all these confirmations, we are labeling the information given by officials on local PPE supply as true on our KSAT Trust Index. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. If you have information, pictures, or videos that you are unsure about and want our KSAT Trust Index team to check out, just submit it to ksat.com slash trust index. And be sure to tune in Sunday nights when we'll recap the top trust index stories of the week. Sitting near 70 degrees tonight, mostly clear skies out across South Texas. It has been a fairly pleasant weekend today, the better day because a lot of sunshine and because it was mom's day, of course. Looking ahead to this week, things will be staying very warm. Our afternoon high temperatures, especially as we get into the back half of the week, flirting with 90 degrees there. And we also have a couple chances of storms in the forecast. We talked about the Monday night, Tuesday chance, but coming up in the next full forecast, we'll talk about the rain chances that kick in toward the end of the week. Those are actually looking a little bit better. We'll take a look at the latest drought monitor as well. That'll be ahead in just a few minutes. Courtney. Thanks, Katie. Still ahead, an emergency room doctor in New York takes us to the front lines and explains why vigilance is key to preventing a second wave of COVID-19 infections. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Dr. Budinger is an emergency medicine physician at Mount Sinai Hospital in Queens. He's concerned the lack of ER patients means people with health emergencies are too scared to seek help there. He also reminds us 
that vigilance against the virus is necessary because it can re-erupt at any time. The doctor further explains the risks in his own video diary, filmed during his overnight shifts on May 1st and 2nd. If there's one thing I've learned from this pandemic, it's to not take anything for granted. One minute, you can get a set of circumstances and scenarios that would vastly differ from the next. So let's see how things go. It's really nice walking in, seeing signs like this, which says thank you from the Historia community. Uh, no matter what day it is, we still feel the tremendous support coming from the surrounding community. Uh, as you can see behind me, no patients are seated in our chairs or in one wing of our emergency department. And some of the hallways, as you can see, are empty. I can't hear oxygen. Things are much better than they were about a week ago. Right now, I'm in the critical care room and we are practically empty. As you can see behind me, these are two empty beds. Unbelievable. Last week even, we would this room would constantly be filled. And during the peak of coronavirus several weeks ago, we would have stacks of patients waiting to just enter this room without any capacity to take care of everybody here. It is a double-edged sword to have a drop in volumes. On the one hand, it's wonderful because it tells us that the prevalence of COVID is perhaps on the downtrend out in the community. But it's also scary to see this level of emptiness in an emergency department because coronavirus, as far as we know, doesn't prevent heart attacks or prevent strokes or prevent other emergencies. And with so many people being scared about entering the emergency room, where are they? Are they at home suffering from their illness, not having any medical attention? I know that there are many people out in the community who are suffering from other emergencies but are too scared to receive medical attention. One last thing I'll point out is please do not be fooled by the volumes currently. This virus can re-erupt suddenly and we all have to stay very vigilant. So I'm about midway through my night shift and I've seen quite a number of patients who have not had coronavirus. But given the insidious nature and how silent the disease can manifest itself, plus the fear of missing the diagnosis, it still remains in the back of my mind with everybody who comes through the door. I had a gentleman who came in this evening with bad congestive heart failure. He had swollen legs, he was really short of breath, and I had to put him on a breathing machine for what I thought was a heart failure exacerbation. And then when I saw the chest x-ray, it looked like classic coronavirus. You'll see behind me a few number of oxygen tanks. These are still present throughout the department and across the hallways, and they are on standby. God forbid we are to get subsequent ways of this virus in the New York City area. Just made it out of the hospital, finished my night shift, ready to get home and rest in time for round two tonight. Thankfully, overall, it went better than I expected and certainly better than it has in previous weeks. Well, we talked about the lack of humidity. We yeah. talked about the lack of rain, but today was just so perfect. I actually sat outside for a lot of today just because I couldn't be inside. I knew it might be our last chance before yeah. summer. It was great, <laughs> and now it's going away. Uh, yes, it's going to go away pretty quickly, and it does look like next weekend we could have better chances of rain around, so it's good that we got some nice weather in for mom today. I want to get a rainfall check for you. So far this month, we have had only a trace of rain at the airport here in San Antonio, and while it's seems like May just started. We're already more than an inch behind in terms of rainfall. But when you look at the whole year, things aren't so bad. We've picked up uh, almost seven and a half inches of rain at the airport since the beginning of the year, and that puts us um, almost two inches below average. So Long story short, we do need some rain and that really shows in the drought monitor. So those numbers that's just for in and around San Antonio. When you look at the big picture, you can see that we still have some pockets of even extreme drought in a portion of B County there and also off to the southwest southern portion of Maverick County. But really anywhere you see color here, even if it's yellow, that's exceptionally dry ground. But even that 
could use some rain. So uh, we really do need some rain in here. And unfortunately, it looks like as we head into at least the next couple of days, that Monday night should be over here. Rain chances will be fairly isolated Monday into Tuesday. However, late in the week and for next weekend, it does look like rain chances will kick back in and we could even have some scattered rain around by next Saturday. That's something we're watching closely uh, with our fingers crossed. That's for sure. I do want to talk again about the potential for some storms developing late tomorrow into the pre dawn hours of Tuesday morning. Things will start to get pretty active in far west Texas tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, so we'll have to watch storm development there closely. But several of our forecast models do blow up a complex of thunderstorms tomorrow evening out west closer to the Big Bend region and then bring it east through the overnight hours closer to the I-35 corridor. General trend with these storms will be that they'll be weakening and really there's no big severe weather concern even as they develop off to the west. Maybe some hail briefly, some gusty winds. But if these storms can hold themselves together as they approach I-35 in San Antonio in the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning, we're just looking at some heavy rain, some flashes of lightning, rumbles of thunder. Again, they'll have to fight likely a cap on the atmosphere, which if storms run into a cap, that's almost kind of like a it's like a lid and it doesn't allow them to continue to grow and keep going. So it does look like those storms will have to fight a bit of a cap over San Antonio as we get into Monday night. But nonetheless, some showers and rumbles of thunder will be possible through early Tuesday. And again, that's likely why the Air Force Thunderbirds flyover has been moved to Wednesday. Wednesday rain does not look to be an issue. Let's talk about Friday and the start of next weekend. Looks like the West Coast will become a bit more active with another low pressure system heading our way. And it looks like this upper level low swinging overhead could bring us a good shot at rain beginning late Friday into Saturday. Right now it looks like we could have some scattered showers and storms moving in late Friday into Saturday. So you'll see that chance of rain in the forecast. We'll continue to watch that closely for you over the next couple of days. And of course, we'll have updates for you through throughout the week all on all of our newscasts, but also on the KSAT weather app. So make sure you have that ready to go. Tonight, temperatures falling down into the low 60s. We'll pull in some more clouds tonight, so we won't wake up to the bright sunshine tomorrow like we did today, and just more clouds around tomorrow, but we'll get some sunshine in as well. That'll warm us up to 84 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Can't rule out a stray shower tomorrow afternoon. That is more likely south of the Highway 90 corridor, but again, it's very late tomorrow night into early Tuesday, that if those storms from far west Texas make it to us, that could bring Bring us a chance of rain there into early on Tuesday. By Wednesday, we will be firmly settled into that pattern of morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. It'll be warm, it'll be humid. And then toward the end of the week, late Friday into Saturday, that's when that next upper level low approaching could spark our next chance of some showers and storms. It does look like next weekend, the potentially rainier weekend or rainier day, excuse me, would end up being Saturday. But we'll pretty pretty much take what we can get at this point. So keep your fingers crossed, guys. It was go. nice while it lasted. Yeah. At least mom had some nice weather. Yeah, we got to fill the aquifer up, though. Yeah, got to get do. some rain. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Dak Prescott is boycotting the Cowboys' virtual off-season workouts to try and force the Cowboys to sign him to a four-year contract. Will this set him back? Learning a new system under the new coach, Mike McCarthy. Sports guys will debate that and more tonight. And our championship cinema features the fighter starring Mark Wahlberg as Mickey Ward with the commentary from our own Jesse James Leha, who met Ward in the ring. Let's find out what else is on Instant Replay tonight with Greg Simmons. And I was there for that fight as well in Freeman Coliseum. <laughs> USC signals a return of live sports broadcast last night with NASCAR and Indy Racing in Texas to follow. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Live sports is back with UFC 249 and broadcast live from Florida last night. Without fans, NASCAR returns one week from tonight and Indy Racing at Texas Motor Speedway on June the 6th. Is this a good sign that all live sports will be back soon? Sports guys will tackle that and who has the best schedule between the Cowboys and the Texans. I want to give you a real shot. I want you to come with me. I want to pay you to train with my guys. Where? Las Vegas. Do it right and make one last run at this thing before it's too late. What about my brother? Well, I'll do respect is too much trouble. And Championship Cinema climbs into the ring tonight as Mark Wahlberg portrays Mickey Ward, who faced our own Jesse James Leia in Freeman Coliseum. Why did the bout end with a technical split decision? Our Larry Ramirez and Jessica Hunt with all the fun facts. And Jessica also brings us more on eSports and not only growing with his fan base, but prize money as well. All that plus Patty Mills is using Mother's Day to raise money and awareness to combat domestic violence during the COVID-19 pandemic. And players from San Antonio FC could be back on the pitch for practice as early as tomorrow. Instant Replay is live and it is now. Next. Taking steps in the right direction. Another good sign. All right, thanks, Greg. We'll see you in just a little bit. We'll be right back.